we can finally start. Yeah. Okay then. Stefan is gonna start with. Uh, um, yeah. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome uh, to the first session of our coding lab. Are we, are we have, have you not in the coding lab, or did we change the name? Ah, uh, let's call it coding lab. It's the okay. same. Game Dev Night coding lab. Yeah. Welcome to the first session of the Clan Foot uh, coding lab. Um, yeah, uh, we are here for the people of the uh, students of game size engineering uh -huh. of Clamford and we want to yeah, introduce you to the world of programming and programming games. So I hope we will all have a lot of fun and maybe learn a little bit. Um, first of all, I want to ask uh, who of you are not familiar with programming or game engines in general? Put up your hands if you are not familiar with programming or game engines. Okay. Okay, hi Nick, we are, you are here. Nick is all, also in the chat. So, um, yeah, let's talk about game engines. Can you talk over, over the screen again? Yes. Okay. Uh, but so, let's talk about uh, game engines first in general. Um, how were the, be the beginnings of uh, programming games? Well, in the beginning, uh, there were no standards, like in the 1980s, 1970s. There were absolutely no standards for programming games. There were no tool sets. So that means that every time a game company wanted to program their games, they had to build everything from scratch, like how, to in how, how, do, how the software interacts with your hardware, etc., etc. And this was rather tedious because you have to start from scratch every single time. Um, imagine, for example, let's not talk about video games, but for example, real life toys. Okay? So let's example you want to build a toy car that you want to play with. Um, if we want to talk about the olden ages, you would go into the forest, cut down a tree to make to get the, 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 the wood. You would. Uh, yeah, cut it on, uh, with your own hands. Then you would go into the mines and mine yourself some ore and smelt it so you, can, so you have uh, your parts to assemble a car. This, of course, would be very, very, uh, yeah, a lot of work to do that, especially if you want to change something, then you will have to go out into the wild and get more materials. Um, and this is very, very tedious, especially you want to make, if you want to make some changes. The same is for the game development. Again, in the early days, people used to program games from scratch. However, after a while, people noticed that uh, very often there were things that are done repeatedly. Like, for, for example, in many games, you have some kind of movement system to make the player move around, um, or some kind of input system to read from the, from the keyboard. And uh, so game programmers uh, tried to make some standardized packages that can be reused for many different things. Let's take again our uh, toy car example. Instead of making a toy car from scratch, you can just buy Legos and build yourself a car out of Legos. Legos has many pre-made assets for you and you just have to assemble them in the right way to make it work for you, okay? And the same way, game engines provide us with many standardized tools that are used very often in games. Uh, and we just have to use these tools that these game engines provide to assemble our game similar to a Lego box. We assemble different components together and then just uh, add a little bit more functionality uh, to make them work in the way that we uh, want them to behave. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, and uh, yeah, this is what uh, game engines in a very general sense are. They are a set of tools that we can use so, the, so, we, want, so we don't have to, use, uh, to do everything from scratch. Okay, <coughs> and um, to nowadays there are many, many different game engines on the market. Um, some of you might have heard from uh, about uh, Reveal or Unity or Godot. Um, many game engines focus on certain uh, aspects of games. For example, we have what's what's the game engine uh, Twine, 
There's a game engine called Twine, which is mainly used for uh, making visual novels or browser-based browser story-driven games. I do. <coughs> I think I have it, actually. Yes, I do. You do have Twine? Yes. Tell it. <laughs> It's to make uh, text stories. Yes, text stories, like visual novel adventures, visual no novel uh, games. Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's me uh, that trying out to Twine without knowing what to do. <laughs> My stream is mocking me. I thought I thought the audio. <laughs> Well, uh, you can do that while they're short, right? Well, Wait, what? What do we uh, have to do? Remove the audio. Um, I think someone of them are at the... Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, that was not us. Uh -huh. Okay, um, on the other hand, uh, we have other game engines like the Unreal Engine. Can you stop playing your game? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can you open uh, Unreal? The Unreal uh, I do not have Unreal on my yes, PC, but I do. Yes, just want to have an example. The Unreal Engine is one of the leading uh, engines in, in the market to make big AAA video games that look absolutely awesome. Um, you can make all kinds of games. You can make first-person shooters. You can make strategy games with it. You can make rela relaxing games. Uh, however, it comes at a, at, a, at a cost. Unreal is very, very hardware hungry. Um, Unity, on the other hand, is a good middle ground. It's a very, very popular engine. Can you switch to Unreal? Uh, mm -hmm. Unity is a very, very popular engine uh, in the indie uh, development uh, market um, because it's, it's not as hard, hard for hang hungry as, uh, as Unreal, but you can still have a lot of uh, graphical fidelity and functionality. Have been taken out of the toolset, and many game developers use uh, Unity for their games, and it, it has a lot of popularity also with uh, providing the assets. Uh, Unity has a lot of um, assets that you can work on the For example, you can model text to the game, you can create models. In truth, there are many reasons. I actually uh, wanted to check out in the last days. Uh, well, as we said, there are so many engines, so many different tools you can have uh, depending on what you need to do. For example, if you just want uh, an interactive story, Twine is perfect. If you want a TV game, you can use a TV Maker or a TV Maker 2. Or there are so many different uh, options. Unity and Unreal are the two most uh, popular ones when you come to making uh, complex or even simple games uh, for uh, Unity, but also for um, for uh, big houses. Look, there is no better choice to use Unity and Unreal because they do have different parents, different features. Some people, uh, like I uh, uh, watch videos of artists saying that they pre personally prefer uh, Unreal because uh, Unreal has all the tools for artists already installed, where for Unity you do have to install them, but also other artists who were saying that actually they prefer Unity because for them it's a bit more beginner friendly. There are many opinions and many reasons, so like, there is no way of thinking that one is better than the other, but it is true what I said before that Unity uh, is meant to uh, give you a, a base packet that package that you have to uh, add and you have to add in it to many other packages and plugins depending on what you use while Unreal wants to come with everybody, everything already made. Uh, but and from which one do we gonna teach you? Unity, because I know Unity not Unreal. <laughs> <laughs> very, very easy. Uh, right now I wanted to show, uh, I showed you guys uh, videos of what can be done both in I don't care about them hearing the video, but they can hear me in this room. Okay, no music from the video. Um, nice of you to say I don't care. <laughs> I, I love the 
Anyway, uh, for example, uh, in the last year, so many people were saying that Unreal used to have uh, uh, better graphics and allow you to reach uh, my, uh, higher level of uh, realism, and it is true. Usually, it is like this in Unreal, but as you can see in this video, people do manage to do <laughs> cool stuff also in your game. And Not every game has to be realistic. Many people also preferring that their game in Santa Claus has a highly stylistic mm -hmm. uh, choice. So. Um, just because Unreal is more sophisticated, it doesn't mean it has to be Unreal for every single game. Yeah. Uh, on that note, many people say that it's totally the same choosing between Unreal and Unity for uh, simple and stylized games. So, up to you guys. Yeah, uh, just like PS, PS5 or Xbox One, there's many. Well, yeah. there we can talk about it. Let's not get into console wars, come on. <laughs> so, okay, let's, let's start with Unity, guys. Uh, I hope everybody has Unity already installed. Uh, in case no, uh, w install whatever you want. But uh, I installed the l latest LTS. Uh, for the ones of you who doesn't know what an LTS is, uh, it stands for long term support, which means that uh, the company is trying to keep bugs out of the version. They're trying. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm going with uh, the latest one that they installed like two days ago. And I found out today that they actually they moved something, and I'm very bothered by it, but I'll tell you later. Okay, new uh, project. First of all, has everyone Unity installed? Or is there someone who doesn't have it installed yet? If someone doesn't have it installed, please raise your hand. Okay, everything. Everyone has. Everybody has Unity. Wonderful. Just sure. Okay, uh, creating a, a new project. There is not much that I need to explain. I believe it is. Let's call it this project. And in changing between uh, 2D and 3D for uh, creating the project is not big much of a deal because you can, uh, it, it's not gonna change anything in truth inside the editor, only a few parameters of uh, what is shown to you at the start of the editor, but you can change it later. So you can totally start a project as a 2D project and change it to 3D and uh, vice versa. So, well, I'm creating a project. Let's hope for it to do it. Yeah. Yeah. In the meantime. Hello, people. Are you doing your back? Okay. <laughs> they didn't talk about the high definition render pipeline in the universe. Gosh. Okay. Well, Unity, uh, in order to achieve the realism of uh, high level of qualities, uh, they made like four years ago, three years ago, uh, some uh, different render pipelines, which we can define easily right now as uh, uh, packages with settings to uh, change uh, uh, how to render uh, your project. And uh, the uh, universal render pipeline is the one you want to go with uh, if you want uh, um, uh, high, graphic, uh, um, high levels of graphics, but not very very high because for that one is the high definition render pipeline as you can guess from the name damn it's lower than i thought i think it's because we're recording and streaming yeah probably i think the cpu is a little bit busy <laughs> <laughs> okay people we are finally into unity this thing here is the one i'm bothered by the fact that they moved because it used to be up here uh, actually it made more sense now but i hate it just for you know <laughs> Uh, so, uh, the windows. Uh, this is what you get if you open the project uh, in, uh, with uh, 3D, uh, as everybody is seeing right now. Uh, I'm going to uh, tell you what this windows does. This one is the scene window, and uh, it's going to show you everything that is in the scene. Uh, your, you scene can your scene is basically your current level that exactly. you're editing. So, uh, in a game, Usually, a game is uh, comprised of multiple different levels, or which are multiple different scenes. Maps, for example, uh, in many games, even the main menu is secretly a level, and uh, then you, when you click the start button, it would switch to the level that is designated the starting mm -hmm. level. So in this case here, we have an empty level that we can edit. And we will be editing it later. <coughs> yes. The game view, uh, which you reach if you click here, as I showed you. Uh, it's what your camera views. And uh, if you added the UI, also shows you the UI. 
So it's what the player is going to see. And the asset store, well, is the asset store. Uh, as I said uh, a moment ago, Unity has a lot of uh, plugins, but also assets of various types, visual assets, audio assets, and uh, even uh, um, code that uh, helps to do whatever you want to do. Okay, then. Uh, the hierarchy is the, the window in here. The hierarchy also shows you everything that is in the scene, but uh, uh, on the, on a more, uh, how can I say, technical level, you, you don't see graphically, but you see uh, what in it uh, with uh, the properties it has. And um, we, we will get back to this later. Okay, can I add something? Yes. Okay, the hierarchy is basically showing you everything what is in your level. In a video game, in the level, there are many, many different things like um, different objects, like for example, the ground or houses or the sky, etc., or the sun are all different kind of objects placed inside your level. And those would show up then on the left side in your hierarchy where you can select and edit these uh, single objects once we have added them. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the, the window you see on the right side, the one that changes when you click on the objects in the hierarchy, is the inspector. The inspector shows you uh, the game object you clicked uh, with all the, uh, his properties. In particular, uh, one property that you're going to always see, and these properties in Unity are called components, is the transform component. The transform component uh, shows the position, the rotation, and the scale of the object, for example. Now, Go to the hierarchy and press right uh, click. 3D objects. And whatever, cube, sphere, whatever you want. As you can see now, we created a cube who has uh, some specific uh, components. Ignore these ones from now. Let's concentrate on the, let's focus on the transform component. As you can see, uh, there are um, uh, coordinates in the, the scene view and uh, uh, changing the coordinates of the object you change its position, rotation and scale in the scene view. I'm just making it as ugly as I can. Now it's perfect. Okay. Uh, you can change it not only with uh, modifying the transform in there but also uh, with these tools you find in here that a moment ago was here, but posi put it whatever you want. For example, with, uh, with the view tool, you, you only move the view, as uh, you can get. And with this one, you move uh, the position, only the position, as you can see also by the, the component uh, on the right in the specter. And uh, if you click to the arrows, you move it to the object axis. For example, you can see that uh, the x-axis in the world would be in this direction, but uh, in the object it's in this one because the object is rotated. If I put the object in uh, initial rotation again, it, uh, it, it is the same to the world. And x, z, and y. But also you can press these little um, squares that you can see. And for example, if you put the, uh, click the square, you're gonna move the object in uh, both X and Z, but not Y. Same for the other object, for the other squares, that you move uh, in this case from Z, the, uh, uh, Y, and but not X. What do? Um, if, I inter if anyone has any uh, trouble following the steps, uh, please let us know. Okay. Yes. So we can come to you. Probably you should also specify that scale is stretching the object. Like, like you said, <laughs> it's stretch to the mesh, and you will find out uh, as soon as you try to put a texture on it. Because if you put a texture, a texture on a stretched object, a scaled object, you're gonna see the texture very stretched, and it's awful. Unless you plan for that. And um, the other uh, tools that you can see, uh, rotation, scale. And let's say that this one uh, direct tool is also scaling 
but it would be scaling for uh, UI elements. Uh, we will get to that eventually, but not now. And this one is if you want to have everything in one. Usually, I never use this one. Also, you can access easily through shortcut to all these tools by using the first uh, five um, uh, keys in your keyboard, which are the Q, the W, the E, the R, and the T, and the Y. If you press Q, you're gonna go to the scene view immediately, uh, W to the transform, and you understand the rest. Try it out if you want to. And uh, also, if whatever tool you have uh, selected, if you press Control, uh, you're automatically in the um, scene view. It's actually quite profitable. And if you press right click, uh, you're gonna move uh, uh, what you can see in the scene view, you're rotating. So with control, you're moving you, sir. And uh, with right click, uh, you're moving uh, your camera. Well, just let them fuck around, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. Uh, I would say the uh, okay. While you have a game object selected, you just have to press HAT to get uh, the camera uh, straight on the game object. So move whenever you, were, you want uh, your camera and your stuff. You go to the object, you press F. Yes, thank you. Exactly what I wanted to do. Shift F in case it doesn't want to and uh, you get back to the object. Okay, you, you may notice that on the, on, in the, when you select the cube or whatever object you've uh, created, in the inspector we not, we not only have a transform component, but other components as well, such as a mesh filter, a mesh renderer, and a collider component. And if we click on add component, we can see that we have to delete this with many, many different other components. Hello. Hey Hello. You can see that in, in the, uh, when we click on add component, we have Unity has many, many other pro uh, components. For example, here we have a lens flare component. If we go to the that doesn't show. Yeah, we, we, but stuff. we can add we can add more components to an object to give it more functionality. Okay? For example, we can add an audio component mm -hmm. so in the game it would then play a sound. Yeah. Or we can add a particle effect component so it displays some fancy particle yeah. effects. For example, at the moment you're seeing the box collider, which is a well, box shaped collider that is uh, automatically um, in uh, your box when you create it. You can remove it by right-clicking on the component and uh, add, uh, for example, an, a new collider of any case. Any case. Uh, let's add, uh, for example, a capsule collider. Now you see that our collider is different in nature. I believe you know what a collider is. Uh, do you want to say? Okay. Does it, does it does anyone know what a collider is or not? Raise your hand if you don't know what a collider is. Come again? I know what a collider is. Okay. Okay then. Okay. So ju just as a just a, a quick reminder, uh, just to make it clear, a collider is basically a shape um, that gives this um, object physical some properties. kind of physical form, uh, so it can touch or collide with other objects. In the world, for example, can you can you edit again the uh, the cylinder? Oh, it's sphere collider. Okay, for example, here now we have uh, an object that has the physical shape of a sphere, so it would roll around in the world. But uh, in the visual style, since we have uh, in our mesh filter we have a cube mesh mesh selected it would have the physical, uh, the, the visual form of a cube. So it would basically, it's a cube rolling around at its, at its, as if it was a sphere, okay? As you can say, as you can see, 
changing the mesh filter, you change the actual mesh of the object. But doing it without changing also the mesh render could create problems. So always imp import your object uh, properly. OK, uh, these two uh, panels here are the project panel and the console pa panel. The project will uh, contain uh, all the assets that you have in your game. For example, right now we only have uh, scenes. Specifically, we have one scene, that is the scene open right now. But uh, for example, you may want to add other objects, uh, other um, assets in your game, like uh, 2D models, like uh, uh, audios, like uh, sprites, scripts, and so on. Usually, a best practice would be to do to create folders uh, of the name of the things that you're gonna, yes, just like that, scripts. Of uh, what's it gonna sound, contain? Sound, and sound effects, sound yeah. effects. And music, or etc. I highly recommend having a very organized folder structure so you can easily find uh, specific types of assets that uh, you want to use because otherwise it, it, will, it becomes easily very chaotic. Hello. And uh, <laughs> the console panel is the one uh, that you through code or unity when you do something very bad can communicate you stuff L later in the uh, in the programming part we will see how to uh, print stuff on the console and uh, what kind of errors unity can give you L hoping that unity doesn't give us any error of course okay then um, let's create a scene, a scene I'm gonna delete the cube just because uh, I don't want him anymore and I'm gonna create a plane by right click, 3D object, plane and I'm gonna call it ground it is always recommended to give your, your game objects a good name so you can easily identify it later on okay <coughs> and uh, um, if you just want to change the name of the game object, you just have to select it and click again, left click. Or select it and right click and rename. Yeah, uh, say left click <laughs> is uh, faster. Uh, for example, we have a ground right now, which uh, comes already with a mesh collider and a mesh renderer and a transform. Oh, very important thing, never forget to do that. Every time uh, you create a, a new object, for some reason the editor can give it uh, random uh, position values. Uh, you can of course uh, change everything by putting 0, 0, 0 but uh, a faster way to do that would be right, right click on the transform component, reset now I want this plane bigger too big mm, yeah, like this or maybe not as you can see, if you change the the its uh, value of the plane, nothing changes unless you go under zero because uh, a plane only has two sides. And okay, we have a ground. Let's create an object over it. Maybe a, a everybody create whatever object you want. It may be a cube. It may be a sphere. How about we make a sphere that draws off? Yeah. Okay. A diagonal ground. Uh. Okay. Wait. As again, I'm playing uh, W to go faster to the tool for uh, the transform. I'm gonna put it up. If you press Control while you're doing any transform uh, in the scene view, it snaps to whatever are your snap settings. For example, right now, by judging it, the settings are uh, defaulted at 0 0.5. Uh, no, yes, no, 25, 0 0.25. Uh, it's okay. I created a cube and now I'm going to create a sphere. And I'm again, reset on the transform and I'm going to drag it up like this. Now, in this moment, if I press play, which is this button here, I would go into uh, game mode and uh, I would see whatever I set up to happen, happen. Uh, in this case, if I do that, nothing will happen. 
I would just see the objects I put in the scene. What we want to do is to add the physics, gravity, for example, to the sphere. And we can do that by adding a component which is called rigid body. Rigid body. Uh, you can see here in the component rigid body that you can set, uh, modify various properties, for example, the mass of the object, the drag, whether to use or not gravity. In this case, we want to because we want to see some kind of interaction and so on. For example, now let's play play again, which can also be played with. Uh, should be shift space. Thank you, Unity, for changing <laughs> your version. I will have to look up again the shortcut. Oh, yeah. okay. Now the, the ball maybe is falling. Maybe put the sphere up a little bit, up ah, yeah. a little bit to the... Like this. Yes. Hey. I did it. Maybe put it a little bit to the to the left so it bounces off the... And if you want to pause it, it's called shift shifting. Yep. Move it a little bit into the box <laughs> so it bounces off. <coughs> so much. Oh, come on. Do something <laughs> cool. Yeah, Mine is doing okay, <laughs> that's what we wanted to happen. And now the ball is going to fall down. You can see, <laughs> as you can see now in the rotation. You, you can see that um, we have a sphere with a spheroid uh, collider, and it collided with, with the box uh, collider, and it actually simulated how it, how it should then behave. Um, and we can also see that since we didn't give the box uh, the box uh, a rigid body, it just stays in place regardless of whether it got hit by another physics object. Exactly, because all objects with a collider but without a rigid body are considered by the physics um, not moving, they can't move. Static, yes. yes. And um, what do we have to do next? Oh, materials, okay. So let's go to the assets and uh, create a new folder. Yes. Okay, then. Let me show them like this. If I modify the position of the cube right now that I am in game mode, for example, I drag him up. Uh, while I exit game mode, the cube will uh, snap back to his original position because uh, everything that you modify while in game mode is not saved. In case you want to save some changes you made uh, during game mode, for example, uh, while playing, I realized that the position of the cube I want is here. I recommend you to right click on the component, copy, oh. position in this case, and uh, while I'm at it again, I just paste. It's, it's something that comes very handy when you make changes during game mode. Can okay. we maybe also start the game again when we modify the gravity of the sphere? Uh, yes, but it will fall so fast that... Okay, then. The make, sphere? Neg make the gravity negative while we are playing. Uh, maybe lowering the mass. For example, I try to lower the mass of the sphere, hoping that gravity... No, wait, it doesn't... Oh, kind of. We will see it uh, with the other stuff later. Maybe. Okay. Okay, then. So we can see that uh, we are playing. We can play the game, but while we are playing the game, if we see that something is not behaving right, we don't necessarily have to go back to the editor to edit stuff. We can edit in real time the values until it's correct and then apply it. And we to copy all the values or save all the values because getting back it will not save them. Okay, then I created a folder that I called materials, and now I'm gonna right click, create material. Materials are what you're gonna put on meshes for them to change color, to have textures, to have uh, maps of some kind, like normal maps of Batman, that you see. Like... Maybe you can see that the cube material is white. No, they don't have a material. And the default okay. color for not having a material is white. That's, what, uh, that's why everything is white. Give me a color. Red. Red was faster. <laughs> okay. 
we created this material, we just need uh, to change the albedo. Yeah. The a, material is, a material is basically a collection of uh, values with which we can affect the appearance, the visual appearance of an object. As you can see here in, in the inspector, if you click on the material, we have so many properties that we can change. Uh, Come again? How do I get there? I'm like on sample data that has my folder. Uh, have you created the material? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Another one one right click on the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. I Can you see the projector? No. No. Never mind. Well, play a little bit with the materials. I'm, okay. I'm just seeing if everybody is. Uh, Okay, when we when we when we click on the material when we click on the material we can see we have different properties for our how th how this material would then look in the real world for example or in the in the game world for example albedo uh, is giving uh, uh, this material a certain kind of uh, background color since we have nothing else since we have no texture or something as anything else assigned. This is just a plain color for our, uh, for our material. But for example, if we assign this color uh, a texture uh, in the future, then we, then we would have, for example, a brick wall. Um, then we can change the color of this brick wall, OK? OK, <coughs> let's immediately uh, assign the material to an oh, object. Okay. So we can see it. Uh, for example, you can assign it both in the scene view, like I'm doing right now, or on the hierarchy. But dragging and dropping. Exactly. Now the sphere is red. Uh, if you change the color of uh, the material, uh, you can see it changing in real time. And uh, to give you a very quick explanation, what uh, do we need to? Does well, anybody uh, want to know what I the other properties are? Let's add emission. For example, the property emission is uh, a, a property that gives this material some kind of self-glow. Like, like a lamp, it would, uh, it would have a base. The albedo, the base color is uh, red, as, uh, as the, how the material itself is. But uh, with the emission uh, color, it would act like a, like a light source. It, 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 it isn't actually a light source. It, wouldn't it, is, it is, but uh, it doesn't affect other objects. It, it, it can. It can. Uh, it can. Okay. In Unity, uh, if you want to create light sources with uh, um, emission from materials, best way of doing that would be to uh, bake maps. Uh, basically, uh, in Unity, there are. Okay, let's do a little bit of anticipation. Uh, there are two types of uh, lightning in Unity, which is real time lightning and uh, baked maps. Baked maps are uh, calculated by the editor uh, before play. Yeah, okay. Uh, while the real-time lightning is real-time. Yeah. Usually emissive materials are better used with uh, baked maps. And uh, so yes, we would need now to bake some map to have uh, to see. But I think that's too complicated right now. Yeah. But um, for example, as, a, as an example that we can see right now, we can not only modify the base color here, but one property that we can see immediately has an effect is the metallic property. It says, how uh, shiny should this object be when hit by light? Mm -hmm. For example, if right now we have a metallic of zero, which, mean, which means it's not metallic, so to speak, at all. But if we increase it, we can see that it's affecting how the light, the light bounces off uh, our sphere. For, or where, for example, the smoothness, it describes how smooth or rough the material is. For example, a smoothness of zero is very sandpaper-ish, which doesn't really reflect any light back that we can see. But if we, or it doesn't make it shiny, but uh, if the smoothness on the other hand is on one, it, it's very, very shiny, smooth, like marble. Okay? So with our material parameters, we have a lot of uh, effect on how the yeah. material usually, 
you will game. always find yourself playing around with these uh, properties to see what better fits the object you created. For example, if you want a, a, an object to look metallic, you would uh, take something that is kind of gray, put it high, the value metallic, not too high, uh, the smoothness, because if it is very high, it will be like a mirror, like you see here. If this would look like a cue ball for when you're playing a uh, cool billiard. That's true. Yes. So, uh, this is. Okay, let's create other materials just to get everything more color. Are there any questions so far? Anything that's not clear? Oh, that's right. Well. Okay. Yeah. Oof, it's awful. <laughs> How uh, about you make it green? Like yeah, once? I'll make it green. Do we have textures? Do we have what? Have textures. Uh, no, but I can... Well, we I can, can download some. We can also create them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's do that. With paint. Yes, yes. let's do that. <laughs> hey, yeah, people. Uh, Okay. Um, Two things we said uh, while uh, people were playing around. Um, if you have an object that cannot be, um, let's say, uh, simulated by a simple shape, like a sphere, a capsule, a cube, uh, and you cannot use those colliders, you can use the mesh collider, which automatically uh, changes to the shape of the object. The 2D uh, version would be the polygon collider, but so far we are going to use the uh, 2D. And uh, one thing that I didn't tell you earlier is how to disable components. For example, if I want this uh, mesh collider to disappear, I just press it here. And now this game object has the component, but is not considered by the editor. For example, uh, this is the sphere. I cannot disable rigid bodies. No, it is a change. Well, anyway. But you can disable the mesh. Yes. You can disable. If we want to uh, keep the collider, but just for testing, we want to disable uh, a component. Okay? We can just click on the, on the um, checkbox. For example, deactivate the mesh collider. Yeah, this and then play. It will pass through the ground because there is it no colliders that block themselves. It mm. will just pass through the ground. It still has the collider, but we deactivate it, okay? So for testing, you don't, you don't have to remove it and then add again later on. Yeah. You can just deactivate a component. For example, you can ah. also deactivate the mesh renderer so it just doesn't render, okay? So just for testing, if we want to say, okay, let's see how it behaves without a collider or let's see how uh, it looks without a mesh renderer uh, or any other thing, any other co uh, component, we can just uh, deactivate them. <coughs> Look at this. I disabled the mesh render but left the mesh collider. So the object is still here and will interact with uh, physics, but we can see it. But it is still here. Look at him. Ah. And just move it. Whoop. Whoop. Ah. Ah. I'll save you. I didn't. <laughs> I did save it. No, I didn't. <laughs> okay. Either way. Maybe we should do textures now? Textures? Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, um, I'm going to create an image on paint. Everyone has played around with the materials now for, with plain colors. <laughs> but of course, plain colors are very boring after a while. So how about now we create some textures so we can assign it to our materials so it gets a more specialized look. <clears throat> so I open any kind of uh, uh, image editing tool that you have and just draw an image and save it uh, into your Unity folder. No, I or saved it outside it. because I want to show them how to import into okay. Unity. Okay, I'm seeing some people doing textures. I'm gonna let them do okay. it. <laughs> okay, then. Alright, <laughs> uh, to the. 
<laughs> so our high skill, highly skilled uh, artist, artist oh, has painted a great texture for our game. Maybe this, this we can use for our player character. <laughs> okay, then. I'm just going to give you a little bit of time for the ones I see here doing the textures. And uh, yeah, I'm going to give you a minute. Yeah. What am I gonna do now? It's gonna be a window. A window that you can put it for a little bit of 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 a little Okay. Uh, now, I will do it. Oops. Maybe we can make a grass texture for the image. You want to? Okay, okay, well. Okay, guys. I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a folder called texture, like you saw me doing before. And into this one, I'm gonna right click, uh, import, new asset, and uh, the horrible thing that I created before. <laughs> <laughs> now, this horrible thing, what do we want to do with it? We could kill it, but let's create a new material. Let's call it ugly. Ugly face. <laughs> ugly material, because it's a material. Also, I'm gonna show you all these little things. While right now I have this material on the inspector, but I want to go to the image that I had before. If I click on anything else, the inspector is gonna change it. If I want the inspector to keep to stay on the same object while I change, I click on this lock. Now I can change without having any problems. For example, I go to the texture again, ugly, and I'll put ugly in a, the albedo of this project. Now you can see that this material is ugly. And let's put it to, to the opposite. Let's, uh, my bad. Let's go back to the material. <laughs> put the material to the obstacle. I, I, okay. Well, it's beautiful. We are, we are using textures because if we just use the colors for the material, it looks very plain and boring. Nothing against it is if it's your stylistic choice. There's nothing wrong with using plain colors. But if you want to give your objects some a bit more definition on the surface, uh, you, we are using textures to uh, give more detail to the materials. Hi. You have to go to the to the uh, texture you created, and you drag it to the albedo. Okay. Remains to the material. Click the lock. You have it now. Okay. Now, do you have the material editor? A material does? Editor. Material editor. Material editor? Uh, no. Not anymore. Come again? A material editor. No, I don't know. Well, you need to have no. some material editor, but it's rather complicated for, for now. Ah, you're referring to the shader. Not that I know of, maybe, but not that I know of. A what? I, I don't know. Uh, 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 material editor in, in, uh, embedded in Unity. Um, there are assets for that on, on the asset store, but yes. well, Unity has certain built-in uh, asset edi uh, shader editors, which produce... Um, Somebody created a dog. A what? A dog. 
<laughs> it's so much more complicated than the material editor in Unreal. Hmm. There are some facts that Unreal is better. Because if you make a shader from scratch, you need to know about GPU, like how to communicate with the GPU. What do you see people? Nobody. Um, the two people are Nick and uh, Magdalena. So. Maybe we can also show that we can use uh, textures for emissive, for example. But we already knew, oh, show them. That we don't, we don't have to use textures for reader only, but also for emissive, for example. So it below Ah, okay. Uh, so for example, we make a black, black texture. Okay. Wait. Paint. Oh, like that. Nope. Uh, because okay. it's all white. No, 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 no. I got a change. Go, this. go to paint. No, wait. <coughs> I can change somehow. Yeah, but, but let's, let's not do that. Let's, let's make it um, yeah. a proper way in paint. Make it a completely black texture. Okay. And then close the. <coughs> ah, don't worry. They, they will look at it when they want to. Okay then. Uh, no, I want to uh, remove everything. No, uh, I have to remember how to do it. Okay. Uh, don't worry, it's all there in Italian. No. I'm not sure if uh, there's any point in making it online if we do this format. I've been asked for, uh, by somebody to do that. Maybe put it on the ground? Or make a cube? Oh. Mm. Somebody's PC sounds like it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You have to make a video. Yes. Okay. Here we have it. Yeah, we cannot notice it at the moment. Yeah, we can, we can but it does look good. Look at him. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do? Do we go straight up to the programming part? Let, let's first explain the emissive. We already explained that emission is a. Uh, no, that, that we can not only use colors for emissive. But also textures. Okay, then I'm gonna show. Because right now the, right now the, end of the only textures are are video. Okay, guys. Uh, <laughs> no guys are listening. So oh, you know you are listening. <laughs> let's, let's wait a little bit. It's got to go. Can I ask something? Can we change the size of the picture on it? Yes, kinda. The thing is, uh, you can modify uh, the tiling. Which is the, the number of time the picture is used to create this texture. You can see it. Yeah. And no, it's a surprise for him because he's the only one listening. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Okay, guys, um, I'm going to show you a little bit more about uh, materials. Uh, you saw that uh, with this material, we uh, also you don't need uh, necessarily to drag, drag and drop, but you can also uh, click here, this little bit dot, and uh, select what you want to be the object. For example, here, we selected this material here, no, uh, this one, and I drag it on the obstacle, and the mission. And this is the material we have seen. 
we can use uh, textures also on these other uh, parameters. Now you don't know what a normal map is, uh, but you just need to know that uh, it creates uh, some fake uh, uh, embossing in the object. If, for example, I put this on the normal map, ah, oh, come on, Unity. It, it doesn't want me to do that for reasons, but you can see now that it looks very weird. It looks weird because actually it, it, it wants to give you the impression that it is uh, um, embossed. It, it's, uh, I can think of the English name. A normal map is basically a 3D, hmm? like, a, a yes. fake 3D effect. But ju just, to, just to explain it, okay, can you remove the normal map? Look again? how angry he is. Huh? Can Sorry. you remove the normal map again? Okay, can, and uh, can you give the uh, beetle the square? The squares. Click, click, click on the click on the albedo. Okay, in your material we have the albedo para. Can you move it over and remove the emissive? Do you want the mouse? Okay. Okay, it's easier like uh, this. Where's the material? Small. Where is the? Why is it emissive? Oh no. Okay. Okay. In your mat in, in your material, you have your albedo parameter. Okay which basically is the base color of your material, okay? So, which is basically, yeah, the base color of the surface that you want it to be. For example, here for the albedo, I selected a texture that ha just has um, these squares, okay? So, but we not only can use textures for our base color, we can also use texture for all these other parameters. For example, if uh, we, we created a texture, which is this uh, black texture with a white smile, okay? So if we then go to the material and... In did the, in it just that uh, you may have not noticed uh, it didn't click on the material, it clicked on the object yeah. because uh, all objects who have a material will also be shown in the component and you can just click on the component to see the material. So right now we are using one texture for the video, which is the these squares, okay? Then we have made a texture which is black with a white smile, and then we can use this texture not only in the albedo to give it a base color, but for example, we can make it a glowing smile when we use emission. Right now it uses an emission with the base color white, but we can give the emission also a texture. For example, this glowing smile. And now we can see the black parts are not visible. They are not glowing. So it just shows the base color, the albedo. But the white parts of our texture, of the massive uh, texture, is glowing. Okay? So we can not only use uh, textures for a base color, but also give uh, our objects some kind of special effects and layer textures on top of each other. Okay, so we can mix and match. For example, now we would have uh, what am I doing? Why is it black now? I'm going to and change the bit of color. Oh, okay. Yes. As you can see, even from the texture, you can change whatever you want. Yeah. So but mostly. So here, basically, we uh, we use the standard texture for the video to give it the surface, but we can not only use it uh, this texture. We can also mix the base texture with a, with a color to give it a different appearance despite being the same base texture. Okay, okay guys, now you have two minutes to create a level because then we will get into coding and with coding we're gonna get make a player controller. Well, something before the player controller but also player controller. Also, uh, let's get back a single second to the hierarchy. In the hierarchy that I showed you before, uh, you can put objects uh, inside other objects. For example, I put uh, the obstacle into the ground. In this way, whenever I'm gonna move the ground, the obstacle is gonna move with it. If I'm gonna uh, make the ground smaller, the object is gonna get smaller. All the transformation that are done to a parent are also done to a child. Parent, child. This is uh, the name. For example, now, 
I'm gonna uh, a best practice is whenever you have something like this obstacle, and I'm gonna make more than one obstacles. You may want to create uh, an empty object. Right click, create empty. Reset the transform always. For example, I'm gonna call it obstacles. I'm gonna move the obstacle inside and have all my obstacles here. This is best practice. <laughs> oh, the ones who are for example, let's create a level. Oh, how high can we jump? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna start doing the scripting part, guys. Uh, who of the new people here don't know anything about programming? I see you are. Okay. Okay then. We're gonna create a script. Uh, in uh, Unity, you can use two programming languages, which are C Sharp and JavaScript. If you are a good person, you choose C Sharp. <laughs> now, I already created a folder called the Scripts before. Now I'm gonna right-click, create C Sharp script. Uh, there are some and problems with uh, opening. Okay. Now we'll do it. And I'm gonna call it player controller. Double click on the uh, script and it will open a Visual Studio. Okay, guys, this is the kind of program that uh, uh, the Visual Studio is going to show you if you open a script with it, uh, with uh, Unity. Uh, for the one who know nothing about programming, uh, ignore everything that is outside here. Like, the stuff above is just stuff, don't care about it. And this, let's just say that is the name of this file. No need to get into detail of that na now. Okay, in Unity, and in all games, you have a concept that is the concept of uh, the game cycle. Every frame, something is done in a game. Maybe uh, the physics, maybe the UI, maybe animation, maybe something else, but every frame, something is done. And that something is inside the update function. Here on Unity, so you already have two functions that are start and update. Start will contain what is going to be done uh, when the scene is started. Update, sorry. Oh, wait, uh, I've been put on hold. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, licensing, licensing is actually nice. Should I go? Just use Notepad. Uh, <laughs> or you could use Vim. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. uh, What's the difference between stu uh, Visual Studio Code and Visual Studio? Visual oh. Studio is the one we have right now. Visual Studio usually requires a uh, license while Visual Studio Code is free. Visual Studio is designed for C-sharp, 
uh, and has many tools for working with Visual Sharp and it's super cool. Visual Studio Code can be used with many other uh, languages. Visual Studio Code community is free. Yes. Community version, yeah. Yeah, Visual Studio Community is the one free. Uh, we're going to use the Visual Studio though, because Visual Studio Code, yes, you can also program in C Sharp, but also other it's things, but yeah. Visual Studio has more, well, you can use either at the end, but uh, Unity is always going to open up what Visual Studio. Oh, uh, you don't have uh, it on your machine? Yeah, yeah, that's Studio Code, but now it's just... Uh, you can open, open it in Visual Studio Code, it's the same. But now, I don't know where it is. Uh, uh, so it's, it's everybody's it's working on that. But it's totally the same. It's just, uh, you just need IE, so you could use a, 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 a TXT file to modify it. So. Yeah. Are you playing at Okay, well, when people are ready, I'm going to give a quick introduction to variables. I already said, I already said. I don't actually. think people... Yeah, <laughs> nobody's listening, but if I keep on explaining right now, I don't know. Maybe we should wait for everyone to have installed. Exactly. Before we start. Maybe we should first extend the project. So. No, later. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll wait for each. Let's first explain. Uh, uh, let, for the moment, let's just add them. This is a bunch of code that gets uh, done every, every frame and once. Let's not get too much in detail of what a function is. Oh, tell you guys tell me when I can go forward. important uh, uh, concept is uh, variables. Variables are uh, little containers that contain something. What do they contain? It depends on what you create. For example, now I've created this line. It says int e. Whenever you find a, a word that is in blue, it's a specific word of that programming language. In this case, int means that you're creating an integer variable. So e, in this moment, i, sorry, is an integer variable. And it can contain any uh, natural number. For example, if I do this, i will contain the number 1. The ugol, in a programming language, the single ugol, is an assignment, which means that what is on the right we get into what's on the left. So I can do i equals 1, and it means that i will have the uh, value of 1. But for example, you cannot do the opposite. You cannot do 1 equals i. It means nothing. Now, there are a few types. The ones you need to know so far are int, which stands for integer, float, which stands for uh, um, decimal number, and for example, uh, I added the F at the end of the number because uh, many editors like you to specify what you're giving. And uh, I, I said 0 0.5, which is a float. Uh, it's just uh, best practice. Uh, uh, remember that, but it's not important. Other types that they need now. A very important type in programming is bool. Booleans uh, can either be true 
or false. So, I'd say uh, other uh, string string variables contain uh, sentences that, or words or uh, well basic text, and you put the text within uh, double um, what's the English name? Quotation marks. Thank you. <coughs> These are the basic kind of uh, types that you need to know. There are so many other types and we will be using also today uh, class types that are types uh, with, uh, they are more complex, they have much more in it and they will see them in a moment. Okay then, uh, should we start? So basically every program that you have in on your computer um, can be boiled down to very, very simple uh, types of variables or, or types, like for example, when you uh, display something on your screen, it's nothing but, but a bunch of numbers that get interpreted in a certain way, uh, either to display a certain color on, on a pixel on your screen, or for example, when you send a text message, then numbers get interpreted as text. So in the in the background, everything in your computer is a, it's just, it's a bunch of numbers. And those are a certain way mm -hmm. how to interpret these numbers. Okay, so for example, uh, the I, we say whatever numbers are in the I should be interpreted as a whole number. Um, while, for example, this string is also for the computer, just a bunch of numbers. We are just saying, um, hey, computer, when you're executing our app, you should treat this as a bunch of text. Okay? Okay, uh, I added a few keywords now. I add public and private. Usually, before type declaration, which means when you create a variable, you uh, add these keywords to um, say whether it is a variable will be seen or not outside the program. If the variable is private, only this program can delete it, shut up, only this variable we see inside the program. If it is public, it can, mean, it can be seen also by the other scripts. Let, let's do a, a very easy example. So, sorry. Yes. So is it if you, for example, want to reference one script in another script so they work together, for example? Yes. So well, if you want, if you want to, within that script, you want to reference the other script yes, to do something. Yes, you can use public variables for that. Yeah. Usually people use other uh, ways of doing that because uh, the idea in programming is to have public variables only when it's totally needed uh, but yes you can do that with public variables also. and now I'm gonna show you on unity now get uh, the the object that you want to be the player and click on add component and look for the name of the script you created for the ones of you who were creating the script with me. For the ones of you who did not create the script, uh, raise your hand to show you again how to do that. Nobody? Yeah. Wonderful. You have two ways to do that. You either take the script and drag it on the object. For example, I have the script here, I just drag it on the object. Or I do add component and I look for the script. Now, ah, oh yeah, they're doing it. Okay, I'm waiting. Did you install features? 
Yeah. 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 Should be, we should still, yeah. Okay. So it's giving you an error because it cannot be the Yeah, 
while private is not. For example, here in the Unity Hub, now I added that script has a component to the game object. You can see that the variables who I put public, which is the boolean and the integer, can be seen in the inspector. Why the ones who I put private, like the float, are not. Consider also that these two variables, which I did not say neither public nor private, are considered private. When you don't specify, they are private and they are not seen in the inspector. Also, I uh, just uh, want to let you know, well, to notice how you can interact with this. And for example, if I here in the inspector click here uh, on the boolean to make it false, it is in false inside the script. You can change the values of the script through the editor. Yes? Uh, did I understand right? Uh, if you want to put it public, you have to specify it. If you don't specify anything, it's going to be private. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Now, let's get into the start function or method. Uh, you will hear us programmers say many times the word function or method. In this case, we are referring to this piece of code which, uh, um, well, let's just say that uh, when we say calling a function, it means that whatever is inside this piece of code will be executed by the machine. 
For example, here I am on the start function, which is actually a method, but I will use both terms. Uh, start gets called by Unity every time the scene starts, if the object with the dot script is on the scene. Now, just write as I do. Yes. Um, does it matter if you put like capital D or not? Yes. Uh, be careful to use the uh, the minus letter uh, as I do because uh, all most of programming languages are case sensitive. It means that if you write a debug with a lower D, it's not gonna work. So remember to use uh, the upper case and lower case appropriate. Uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going forward. Debug.log is a function that interacts with the console. The console is this part here of Unity. What it does is to write on the console whatever it's inside. Now, I wrote S, but let's make it easier. Uh, this is an example. For example, what I'm saying here is uh, at the start of the play, right on the console, this is an example. Let's see if it works. I'm going to the Unity editor again. Ah, fudge. I clicked the wrong one. I'm going to press play. As you can see, we have here this message which says, this is an example. Uh, I think I didn't say a, a lot, but is there any question at all? Yes. Yes? No, yes. Now you now guys, we were talking about variables a moment ago. Variables are really useful because they contain data. I'm waiting for Does she have problems? Do they have problems? Okay. For example, here I gave this string which says this is an example. Uh, but for some reason, I don't want to uh, specify what I have to write and I want to use variables, which is what you're gonna always do in uh, computer science. And I then only write s. s is this variable we have here, which is a public string, which says uh, I have a very nice text. Okay. Now, if I start the game, It's gonna write. I am a very nice text. Yes. Now, if if you uh, I have, I have uh, the script uh, as I have, the variable s is uh, seeable in the uh, inspector. Yeah. And you can modify it here. For example, you give me a sentence. This is a sentence. As I told you guys, if you modify stuff in the editor, uh, in the inspector, like you're modifying the string value here, it does change inside the script. I changed the, the, the content of the string in this is a sentence, and now it's printing this is a sentence. Can you show the script again? Yes. Okay then, I'm going forward, guys. Okay, I've explained you the basic variables. Now I'm gonna explain you the basic uh, operators. Variables can interact with one another. For example, now I have two bools uh, that I'm just gonna call B1 and B2. L I'm gonna delete the rest just to have you. 
and see. Uh, let's do this. Now, the, uh, the strange part of variables is that you can use them in operations of various kinds to do whatever you want, basically. That's what programming is. <laughs> it's magic. It's magic, but uh, that people can understand. That's what programming is. And um, for example, look at the code I have. I have two variables on top that are i1 and i2. I initialized them to 5 and 10. Look at this piece of code, which is again inside start. What do you think is going to write on the console? Does anybody have any question about the part? <laughs> any question? Okay. I'm going forward and I'll be writing. Now, I just added four lines, which are four more uh, operators between numbers. What do you think are these lines going to write? Like this one writes five, because I1 is five. This one writes ten, because I2 is ten. Five plus ten does fifteen. What is this going to write? Minus five. But is this one going to write? Fifty. Do you all agree? Yeah, it's fifty. Because then this is a, a multiplication, yes. This one? Uh, 0 5, 5, 5, 10. 10. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. 0. Point yeah. Uh, Actually, it's not going to write 0. 0.5. But you are right. It should write 0. 0.5. And this one? This one, you don't know. Is this know the model? Yes. Oh. So it's the same like in Java? Yeah. In, in this, yes. Uh, Modulo is a modulus, I think, in English. It's a, a specific operation which uh, basically uh, you, know, you all know, remember from math back in, uh, in elementary school, that uh, when you do the, 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 the division, there is a rest. That's the rest. Yes, we, people in math use that. It, it, it is a thing. A bad thing, but it is a thing. So let's see what is written in here. Okay, we have, uh, as expected, that we have I1, A2, I2, sorry. We have I1, I2, I1 plus I2, I1 minus I2, I1 multiplicated for I2. Then we should have 0 0.5, but instead we have 0. And uh, uh, 5 modulo 10 does 5, for the ones of you who are not used to it. But why do we have 0 instead of 0 0.5 in here? Any speculation is accepted. Maybe because it's integer and not the bottom? Exactly. When you do operations with integers, it, this is a very important topic. 
your, uh, your program is going to uh, think through integers. So if the result is not an integer, it will give you the closest integer, which is 0. If you want uh, to uh, change that, well, it's a little bit, we should, I should explain this later, but I will do it now. You must do a thing called casting, which basically you're telling it to uh, change the type. This is one way of doing it. Uh, just going to show you that it works. You it works. To, you need to cast it because you want it to get bigger. I, I want him to know that he has to do with floats. Yeah, exactly. So it gets bigger, but if it's if it's going to be smaller, you don't need to cast it because it's out to cast it. Uh, it's going to be a smaller number than you already put in. It's going no, but the problem here, here is that it's going to be in integers. Yeah, exactly. I'm just asking. <laughs> so now you need to change it to a higher number. Why is higher number? Yeah, to, to bigger ah, value. yes. Yeah, yeah, to the yes, bigger yes. value. It's a yes. bigger value. Yes. So what? you need to write it in, in, in the brackets mm -hmm. that it's supposed to be a float. Or exactly. Double or whatever. Yes. But if it's a double and, and you change it to integer, you don't need to write it. You, you only. Because no, yes. You, uh, if, if you have a operation with the doubles and you want an integer, well, it depends on what you're doing, but you may want to cast because you're cutting out this data. Yeah, but isn't it auto casting from a bigger to a smaller? Well, maybe in this point. If you tell it. Uh, uh, implicit cast. Ah, uh, you make me. I, 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 yeah. Implicit casting is. Implicit casting now? Implicit ca yes. It's, it's automatic. Yes. 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 Yeah. And that would be implicit casting. But uh, uh, not, it's not always clear to the, to the editor. Sometimes you do have to do explicit casting. OK, uh, getting again on uh, the typing. As you Okay guys, getting back to casting. 
Um, a moment ago, I put a casting here, writing it was a float, to tell him to act like these values were floats. Another way of doing that, you have to understand that we people in uh, computer science uh, environments like to do things in an easier way to find workarounds. The thing is uh, that whenever you have an operation within an integer and a float, the, the editor is going to understand it as a float. So in this case, for example, if I just multiply it by U1F, F says that this one is a float, it's just going to say, oh, there is a float in here, so it's an operation with a float. So it totally means that I have to calculate a float. And it's going to work either way. This was to tell you that uh, uh, any operation within integers and floats will get you the float as a result. Well, in this case, it didn't work. Thank you. Either way, going forward. Uh, these are operations within uh, integers and uh, floats, which are natural and decimal numbers. The other important operation that you may want to know are the operation within bools. Now, ah. uh, remember to always write at the end of a line of code the dot comma. <laughs> I, I didn't say it before, you just copy paste it correctly. Uh, it means that uh, the command is over. Uh, it, as you can see, all the lines, but uh, the functions have that. You have problem? That me. You need to also put you there. Actually, neither. If you don't know the difference, that's on you. No, because that's this operation. No, it's. Okay, now it's. No, it's a specified operation. Not for you. No, it's. It, guys, no, it, it, if you do this, it's end. It's still end. If you do two ends, the editor. Uh, not the editor. The. Compiler does in a different way, but it's still the end. It's not going to change your code. No, that's the operation. That's a split wise. In order to do and, you have to do double ampersand. Maybe I'm confusing with another programming language, but I want that's to try this out. I will. Ah, fuck, sorry. Hey, it's correct. Fuck off, you people. Well, as I remember it in C sharp and other object oriented languages, uh, if you do it once, uh, it's just a normal end. If you do it twice, uh, it's just uh, an int to the compiler to check if this one is false or true before doing the operation. Because uh, uh, if this one is already false, it doesn't do the end operation. And in this case, uh, it's this is how I remember it, but... No, I so is it different in Java than C Sharp? Okay. Yeah, I'm confused. I didn't know about this either. Maybe this same. is a special case when you have two votes. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure. If you want me, I can but keep this like this. But this is the standard way, like double. Oh, do no, this is the standard way. That's right. I just wanted uh, to use the other one because I believe it's the same. But this would be the one you use often. I don't know how to, how to make that symbol. The vertical one? Yeah, this one. This one. This could be a problem with you. Uh, it's called pipe. We googled it and we erase it for now. Then we will have to find out to do it on your live or the way updated on the is just yeah, sign with this guy. Oh, isn't it this one? No, that's uh, no, that's uh, this one. Uh, Alt uh, uh, Strike on the. Uh, oh, no, I don't know. I I don't know. Wait. There's no Maybe it's. Yeah, I have no idea. What's my? Probably it's command. Yeah. Uh, I think that's no, this is out. No, this is out. 
Try out command This is Steuerungs SDRG. No? Um, so no, no, no. supposed to be so it's right alt and the plus um, right alt and uh, use end now. <laughs> That's what I always did. Tried every button. Go ahead in the meanwhile you can just copy paste it. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay then. Uh, what you do then? Is it a MacBook? Uh, yeah. These are operations within booleans. The first B boolean, B1, is true. The second one is false. And these two operations are called AND and OR. AND means that if both are true, then this is true. OR means that if either one of the two is true, then it's true. All the others are false. I'm just gonna show you. Tell me. I, I just moved to what you, you were saying. Uh, <laughs> okay, back to the one. B1 and B2 are one is true, the other is false. This operation is called N. This operation is called O. N means that this both need to be true or this to be true. Or means that at least one needs to be false or this to be true. But when you are complaining to say you just action once would be another thing. In this case it's the same, but it would be another thing. Okay. Now as you can see so far, operations between integers give you an integer. Operation within floats give you a float. Operation with integer and floats give you a float, which is still a number, and operation within booleans give you a boolean. There are some uh, operations, though, that we uh, we are interested in that are within numbers and give you a boolean. For example, if I do what I'm asking here, if uh, I one is the same as I2. Remember to use two of the symbols because only one means that is an assignment, like here. For example, what is gonna tell me here? What's, what's, what's gonna write on the console? False. It's gonna write false. And for these others? The, the first one I'm asking if I1 and A2 are the same. False, true, false. Well, you already know programming, let them. You said you already know Java. Did you explain what I'm, the I'm just learning. Did uh, you explain what the second I'm, I'm letting them uh, guess. No, try. Try to guess. What do you think this means, this symbol here? No? It means not Hugel. This is U well. This is not U well, which I'm asking is uh, I1 different from I2? And these ones are bigger or equal, smaller or equal. So, what are going to be the four answers? False. Come on, say it out loud. True? False, true, false, true. Like we expected, no? Ah, I'm coming. No, 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 not uh, yes, because uh, um, these are the questions you say. I want you will take it. Is it uh, you will? The same. Is it the same value? Yeah. I want and it's you want the same value. Then it's going to take you. Which is false. Uh, are different? Okay. Okay. 
one more operator, which is very easy, so no worries. Now, B1, as we can see, is true. With this exclamation mark before uh, B1, I am saying not. In uh, logic, when I say not, I just want the other value. So, B1 is true, not B1 is false. These are few basic operators that you have uh, in programming. Uh, if you have questions about them, you can answer. Uh, answer, sorry. <laughs> Ask me. Answer yourself. <laughs> Any question at all so far? We did basic typing and basic operators. Maybe we should start. Any question from uh, the bottom table about basic operators and basic uh, typing? Huh? <laughs> Where are you following, huh? huh? Do we don't, right? Well, I'd say not to get more into logic. I think let's let's conditions. No, no, no. I think uh, yeah, conditions and then let's have some technical activities like pressing button pushes. Yes, uh, I'd, I'd do before the, the conditions go because the conditions are before the okay. because uh, you are you have uh, <laughs> pressing buttons into conditions. Mm. Now, guys, there are few uh, constructs in programming that are very important. One is the if construct. Now, Ah, you know what? Okay, guys, look at this construct. This is called the if construct. What I'm asking is if whatever is inside is true then do what's uh, in, in between these brackets. If whatever is inside here is true, then do what's in these brackets. Now, we have already seen that I1 equals I2 is false. So it, we won't do what's inside here. And we have seen that I1, uh, I1 uh, different uh, I2 is true. So we will have what's inside here. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you want me to show you the code again? <laughs> As you can see, the the console is set. Uh, it happens. So, do you understand it right? Uh, okay, ask me. And is debug dot log specific specific for you? Yeah. And it's the equivalent, for example, to Print. Java system on the print. Yes, it's, it's okay. Right. But uh, we use it as such. Uh, but what it does is that it writes here on the console, specifically on the console. Okay. So if you want to have it, an output. On the screen is it's something else, totally different. Uh, you usually use the console. I, I use it mostly for debugging purposes, uh, to just see the values while I'm doing, which is something that you should not do, but everybody does it either way, so because it's faster. There are, uh, there are make Yes, there are. For errors and warnings. Of course, but you're not doing Of course, the then there are other uses. You're not doing the errors and warnings. Yes, you are. <laughs> and actually, if you write code that is supposed to be a library, you have to use the bug log error. 
So yes, you do that. So this is a different, uh, different uh, operation now. It's not yes, it, instead of printing it like that, uh, it prints you like an error, which is something else. But basically, it's the same thing, but then. OK, then. I needed you guys to understand basic typing, basic uh, operators, and basic, and the first construct, which is if. Now we can start to put actual stuff inside our game. Now, what do you want your player to do? You, you, no, uh, I just saw a word face. You okay? Okay. What do we, we want the player to move? Yeah. Okay then. Look at this. I'm going to remove the variables because for now we don't need them. And I'm going to empty the start function. I remember you once again. Start gets called at the start of the scene when you press play. Update is called every frame. What we want to do is something that can be done every frame. So now we're going to work inside update instead of start. If. I do get the suggestions. I do get the suggestions because I am in uh, in uh, Visual Studio. Yeah, I'm now as well, but I didn't get the input suggestion. I just well for this moment, just write uh, as yeah, I do. Yeah. For but what I should give. Uh, I think you should. Maybe it's in the setting that uh, it doesn't, but it's weird. Normally the settings. Yeah, because so no, but. It, it sure is in, uh, in Visual Studio. You're, you're not with Mac too, right? No. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe later I will uh, look up. Now, I'm doing something that uh, I've not explained to you yet. No worries. For the moment, just write it down. I'm going to explain to you in a minute. Those, those commands at all. That's weird. I don't get the colors. Yeah. Neither the colors. No. I, I do get for like if, but I don't get it for input. <laughs> yeah, not the input, not the key, not the key code. Yeah. yeah, we have to look that, uh, at that later. I normally must get <laughs> Ah, that's right. Now this is a little bit complicated, I knew. But now I'm going to explain everything. <coughs> just write it down, I'm just going to... Yeah, uh, okay, first thing first, we have a public variable that is jump height. What does it, why did I have a, a public variable? Because I want to be able to change the height here in the inspector. Why? Because it's fucking comfortable, guys. You, you will always do stuff in the inspector, it's so good. Now, what's the second thing I created? This is another variable, but it's not of a type that I've shown you before. This is a complex type, it's a class type, it's something else than an integer and a, um, and a float. Specifically, this is a rigid body. Is this component here, the component 
rigid bodies. Basically, all these components are basically scripts. And they can be treated as types. What I want to do is to interact with this rigid body. Now, rigid body does physics. And I want now in my code to do physics. So inside my code, I create a rigid body variable to work with. Any questions so far? Why do we add RB at the... Why? Uh, ah, that's the name. That's right. Sorry, I didn't specify this before. Here is whether private or public. This is the type. And here it's the name. You can choose whatever you want as a name. I always go uh, with the first letter of the type unless I need something specific. For example, if I want to call it Rob, I can call it Rob. Because variables can have whatever name you want. The program only cares of what is inside the variable. But usually, remember to name your variable accordingly, so that you always know what somebody does. For example, this would be a, a good way of naming your variables, because inside that rigid body variable, you only have the rigid body. So naming it rigid body with the lowercase r would be a good thing to do. In my case, I always use RB, which would be a uh, shortening. Also probably a preference thing. Yeah, but when you have something like this, only a rigid body component that you're going to use sometime in your code, most people use RB. So, because it, it's faster when you write. Yeah. Let's say, in this case, you either call it RB like me or rigid body like before. It's the same. It's totally up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. But it has to make sense for you, but also for other people in case you work with other people. Um, Does he have a collider? No, I think that might be the problem. Thank you. You're welcome. OK. So once again, here I'm declaring a variable rigid body. And here, in the start, I am assigning it. What? Don't get uh, mad in understanding what this function does. I will explain it to you again in the next lectures. But so far, what I'm asking is, I want this specific component. I want this specific control component that is in my object. This is what I'm asking. I want the component in this object of type rigid body. Now, this be difficult for somebody. Ask me whatever you want. Whenever you. So the those those marks. I am defining the type of what I want. Okay. Get component is a function that you will use very often. And remember to always use it in the start, and not in the update, because it's a, it's a, it's a difficult function for the program. You, you want to do it as, uh, as few as possible. So start, it will only get used once. Is that, yes. Yes. Human <laughs> also, a thing that I did unconsciously, I created this if without brackets. That's something that not all programmers do. That's a thing that you will see me do a lot. Basically, when you do an if statement, uh, an if, uh, it will do everything that is inside the brackets. But if you have only one thing to do, only one line, like in this case, it would work. But it's something that you will see me do a lot. Uh, I cannot not do it because it's just embedded in my mind. But uh, not all programmers do like that. Some people always put the brackets. So you mean the brackets? Yeah, exactly. Like this. Yeah, yeah. 
It, it, it is the same, uh, both cases. Okay then, now I'm going forward. What we have right now in RB is the component rigid body of the game object we created. What I'm doing here is, if, uh, and this is a function from Unity, the key space gets pressed, add vertical force. This is the concept. If I press space, add vertical force to the object, we will make it go up. How do you know it's vertical? Because it's vector three. Vector three is a, 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 is a three dimensional vector. When you add force to an object, you have to specify uh, the force as a three dimensional uh, vector. We are using physics here. Yes, this is x, uh, y, and z. I only want force on the y, so zero on x and z, but on y I'm putting up of 100 multiplied per the, ju uh, per the jump height. Okay. Now, any questions here? Uh, but to, uh, to so guys, what we're gonna do now, uh, we're gonna add a few more functions, a few more lines of code to make you control the character uh, to make it go right, left, uh, forwards and backwards. It's gonna be the same thing we just did with jumping, same principle, but just uh, in other directions. Uh, does it mean, like if I use, like with memory put if, does it mean like if I use a space? No, do you mean here? You use if? Yes. If the key is pressed down, which key? The space key. Then do this. So it always means if I do something. If what's inside here is done, <laughs> then do this. You can think it as if, mm, then. Mm. <laughs> Actually, so it's not just one ray that's been cast, it's more than this. It's like a yes. physical based audio tracing. Shut up! I don't want to tell them velocity yet. I know I always do with velocity. Alin, this is an introductory lecture. Relax. You don't have to make it in a new statement. Huh? You don't have to make it in a new statement. The horizontal. Ah, yes, I do get what you mean. Because it returns a value between Yes, yes, I do. My bad. I was fucking up. You're right on this one. Uh, int. Hmm. Now, wait. Uh, it should be. Try to. Let me see. 
expectations and all the visualization you can get with the project with the people. If you come here to tell me about the time dot delta bug delta time, I'm gonna kick you. Not yet. Okay, people. I added two lines of code to add more interaction to your object. So far, well, I'm gonna let you copy it and then. Do you remember that there is a dot com at the end of that line? Okay, guys, I'm gonna explain these lines of code. This is what we had before. Input get key down space add force up. Which means if I press space, send me to the orbit. This was what we had before. These are the lines I added. They work basically the same. What I asked though is get axis row horizontal. Unity has some built-in stuff for dealing with that. What I'm asking is uh, the, the inputs for the horizontal movement, which is either the, the arrows, the left and right arrow, or A and D. Buzz. This is what I'm asking. Same for vertical. Which is gonna, uh, this is gonna tell me uh, one, zero, or less one, either I want to go right, stand still, or left. Same here for uh, forward, backward, and still, which is one, minus one, zero. So these are the values I'm, uh, I'm receiving here. Now, outside the if statement, I want to add force in the directions that uh, uh, the player is pressing for horizontal, vertical. Uh, why outside? Because I want it to be done either way, uh, without considering uh, if uh, space is pressed or not. So I'm going to add uh, a movement to the x according to the uh, vertical uh, multiplied for some values. Zero on the y, because I don't want to jump uh, by itself. And then some movement uh, in here for the horizontal. Now let's try it out. It could be also that I chose wrongly vertical and horizontal and I have to switch them. It's the same thing right now. Let's check it out. Now I'm pressing space like before. Now I'm pressing D. Woo, maybe too fast. Okay, then let's lower the number. I multiplied for 100 because uh, sometimes you have to multiply by numbers, but this was not the case. So let's get back to the editor. Shut up. I'm explaining. <laughs> okay, D again. Ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh. It's very fast. Why is it fast? <laughs> it's so fast. Where did it go? It's, it's gone. You add it fast every single Exactly. <laughs> the problem here is that it is very, very strong because uh, um, uh, this function is being called every frame. It means that even if I play D once, for all the frames that I was pressing it, it's gonna add it, which is a lot. To uh, make him uh, compensate that, uh, which means to lower it according to the number of times it gets called, you have to do this. You're still adding every single frame. Huh? You're still adding every single frame. Yes, but uh, this time it is uh, uh, lowered by the time. So yeah, okay. Delta time, time delta time, is the seconds that passed between uh, two frames. If you multiply this by this, it's gonna get lower the faster are the frames, which is what we want. Let's try again now. You see, now it's going so slow. But this is what we want, because this is consistent with all the machines. Now, uh, uh, if you remember, I added a public variable, which is movement speed. As you can see now, I'm going to increase movement speed here while I'm playing, like to 100. Ooh, now it's so much faster. That's why we do use uh, variables in this vector. We don't usually use public variables, but I'll teach you how to change that next. I don't know why this happened. Guys, I'm gonna add one little thing that most.
most of you already want. Now, we have noticed that nobody is listening but you. Then I'll explain to you only. <laughs> uh, we have seen that uh, moving the object, it gets out of the camera view and you cannot see it anymore. In this case, uh, uh, I remind you what we did before that was uh, setting uh, an object as a children to somebody else. For example, let's see on my camera. My camera is looking at my sphere like that. Mm, let me rotate it a little bit like this. And maybe, no, oh, no, I don't need this. How about you uh, reparent the camera? Yes, but wait, yeah. man, just wait. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna point it so that uh, the, uh, um, the player is kinda in the middle and then I'm gonna reparent the main camera to the player. In this way, as I said before, all transformations applied to the player are gonna be applied to the camera too. Now, my camera is gonna follow my player. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> too bad my player rotates! How can I fix that? Look at this. On the rigid body, that we touched before, there are these constraints. We added the, the rigid body to the player. I'm gonna freeze all rotations on all axes. Let's see if now it's gonna work. Uh, okay. No, it, it can, it would be able to move, but uh, there is too much friction right now because uh, physics is simulating also friction. Before it, we didn't have that problem because it was uh, rotating, but now we do have this problem. How do we fix that? I'm gonna create a new material that is a physics material. Which I'm gonna call slippery. I'm just waiting for everybody to look at it. No, do, do it on your machines and uh, uh, only turn when uh, you've done the material. Where was it? Uh, crea uh, right click, create, physical material. Then go into the inspector of the physical material and decrease to zero dynamic and static friction. And then we now have our slippery material, drag and drop it to the player. You can see it now in, this, in the collider that uh, it has the new material we created. Let's see it, if it works now. Yeah, kind of slow. So I, I may want it to increase like to, I don't know, 30, but it's working. Whoop, hit, Arr. Arr, no. too bad. I actually want the camera to be... just moving my camera because uh, I was not liking it. <laughs> Sorry, what's the question? No, it's not that the camera is not rotating. The player is not rotating. Go on the rigid body component of the player and on constraint. With the constraints you are forbidding the, this object from moving or rotating to whoops, the inside. Whoops, whoops. In my case. Now. Well, I, you got the first person carrying the wanting to rotate. Mm, <laughs> in that case, you do rotation in another way. Do you want me to do it today? Also, it's already half past eight. Okay. <laughs> we can, we can. Yeah. Well, 
What you can do alternatively is uh, make the character like it was before, so it rotates. Yeah. And but then and then you create a script for the camera. It uh, is fixed to the rotation of the. Uh, also, another solution is that you don't parent the uh, the main camera for the player, and that you make the camera free. Okay. And then with that script, you make you are making it follow. Well, uh, for, for first. Yes. Yes. There are many different ways. For yes. Use. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there are many different ways according to the different needs, but also different people who like yeah. different ways. For example, for first-person cameras that you asked here, I always parent the camera and I allow the camera to move up and down and the player to rotate. So if the player rotates, rotates also the camera, uh, but the camera only up and down without the player uh, going up and down. Okay, so that's just the looking. Exactly, yeah. uh, the camera. And the player does like this, and since the camera is parented to the player, I, it turns to. Okay. But there are many ways of doing that. Yeah. Like this, you rotate, and when you move up and down, it just exactly. Uh, Sorry? Yeah. You keep yeah. take the camera and you drag it to the player. That's true. And you drag and drop it to the player. Also, I want to show this, guys. I just have a problem right now. Look, I am pressing the button to go right and it's going left. I'm pressing the one to go forward and this one is okay, it's going forward. Press left and wait. I press left and it's going right. Why? Somehow it's not how we want him to do. How do I fix that? With operations that we've seen before. I just want to invert it. So I add a minus. Uh, I hope it is clear enough, the reasonment behind. But for you, it's easy. You're a programmer. I added this minus. It doesn't mean that you're gonna have the same problem. I have it because I put the camera in a certain way and the character in a certain way. I'm, I'm just show you how you s how to solve it in case you do have it. And now I'm playing my game. What? This is going. What? If you have, I managed to get it to go over the sun. I don't know how I did it. Yep, yep, yep. Oh. Per boop, per boop. Oh. My beautiful yeah. students. Does, yeah. does anybody have any question at all? What are we going to do next time? Next time. Yeah. Yeah, next time. No, but what are we going to do next time? Are you going to be fan of the absolute? Oh, the. There is actually somebody on the stream, yeah! <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna close the stream. Uh, it is over, my, friend, my single friend from Thank you for attending. The, the other two people from home are actually fakes because it's this computer open and another computer open to check that the stream is okay. Uh, yes! And uh, well, it's, I hope the lecture was okay. I mean, it is recorded on Twitch, so people can easily watch that if they need to. And I'm gonna close it here. Let's be open.